Hi, this is Cheryl from Naughty's Art, and I'm going to do a little drawing video today. A, oops, sorry about the creaking of my chair. So, a few weeks ago, I posted some figure practice sketches that I was doing on Instagram, and a friend of mine asked me um, to if I'd mind doing a video about how I do these. And so this is one of the sketches that I did. I was be the only one at the moment I can find the uh, paper for. So I'm going to um, show a little bit about what I do when I do these. And these are just figure practices. Sometimes I might take them and create a full piece from them, but usually this is just uh, figure drawing practice. Now the best way to do this would be to actually go to a figure drawing uh, group, a life drawing group, and work a model. But that's not always the case, and um, when I can't do that, which is most of the time, this is how I do it. So first of all, where I'll look at the uh, uh, reference picture that I'm using. This is from uh, DeviantArt, and a lot of the uh, ones I do for uh, practice, I go to DeviantArt and I look under their stock photos of their models, and I can usually find something really good. Now, usually when I'm doing this, a lot of times I use a uh, nude photo, but since I want to keep this family friendly in case there are kids watching or someone wants to share this with their chil with their kids or students, this is completely safe. Um, so, let's see if you can see the photo on my tablet here. So that's the picture I'm uh, working from, a woman on a swing set on a swing. And as you see, she's in like little shorts and a sports bra. So that's what I'm going to be drawing. And uh, really quickly, we'll go over the tools I use, which is pretty basic. Uh, pencil sharpener. This one I really like. This is a, I think this is Stadler. Uh, I don't know, I took the label off, but yes, that's a Stadler um, pencil sharpener. You can use any pencil sharpener you like. The reason I like this one is, first of all, it goes in my travel box, my travel sketch box and as a cover on the uh, sharpener so you're not getting the you know shavings everywhere it also has two sizes one regular size and one larger one so for example I can where we go, I can sharpen my big Conte pencils or this really jumbo graphite pencil which I'm probably not going to use today. Um, what I am going to use are sort of my basics. Okay. So first of all would be erasers. And I generally use two erasers. One is your regular old stretchy kneaded eraser. These are fantastic. Um, shape them into whatever shape you need. Now, the problem is these don't these tend to just lighten lines and pick up graphite. Won't completely erase most of the time. So what I use instead is this is a polymer, white polymer eraser. And the other eraser I use is also a white polymer eraser, but it is the tough stuff eraser stick. And it works like a mechanical pencil. You, you know, click the end and it puts more eraser out. This is fantastic. You get little race tiny details and then you get my pencils which I have a regular cheap mechanical pencil by um, bags of dozen 24 at Walmart um, and then my nicer mechanical pencil which is one is uh, Faber Castle and uh oh if I can get the lids coming out doesn't want to come out right now uh oh Hopefully I'm not out of lead in this because I really like to use this mechanical pencil today. Okay. There we go. And so I do have lead in that, but I only have one piece of lead left in this, so I need to order more because I don't have more for this. Um so this is an H, no, this is a B hardness mechanical pencil, which is why I like it. Um, most ones, and I didn't bring, take out my other mechanical pencil. Uh, 
this is my other good mechanical pen. So this one is a um, Ticonderoga one. This one is an HB. So this is a harder one. This is B. It's softer. This is just... I don't even know what hardness this is. This is whatever hardness the cheapies at Walmart are. Um, and then I use my favorite drawing pencil of all time. It will always be my favorite drawing pencil. Your regular old number two, you know, HB number two Dixon Ticonderoga pencil has been my favorite forever. Will always be my favorite over any sort of, you know, fancy drawing pencil. Um, next is the Prisma cover Color Ebony, um, which I'm not sure exactly what the hardness of the Prisma Color Ebony's are, um, but they are graphite pencil. They're really nice, really dark, dark line, really big, thick lead. And then I have two detail drawing pencils um, in H and 4H, and I may or may not use those. I don't always use them. Um, H4 and 4H, these are really hard. Um, really, really hard leads. So they're for really fine detail. Can't always get them super dark. So, starting with that, take my reference image, which is sitting on my desk just out of camera view, but I can still see it fine. It's actually sitting sort of in my sketch box. And um, this is basically just what I do. And I don't know, I'm going to try to explain what I'm doing. How will I do on this? I don't know. This is the type of video I generally do. But we're going to start just really loosely, sort of sketching in the general lines of the body. And by this, I mean super general. This is just. So the, right here is sort of the bend between the uh, waist and the legs. And then this one like there, and the other leg sort of goes like that. So the shoulders, the one arm comes up like this. There's the, the rope hanging down. So this at this point is super loose. I'm not really putting any detail in on this. And sort of here's the other arm. And then the knee, head and neck. There's sort of the head right there. And this is just, you know, skip stick figure. If you watch any sort of drawing video, most of the time you're gonna see some sort of stick figure. And then I sort of put in an oval for the chest. Another little, little circle right here for where the elbow is. Oval down here for the pelvis and the butt. Circle for one knee. Circle for the other knee. Down. Circle right there for the ankle. Kind of a triangly type shape there for the foot. Very one has a triangly ankle, triangly shape for the foot. And right now, I'm sure it so easy, doesn't really look like much. But the whole point of this is kind of working from really basic forms out to detail. So. Just kind of sketch in sort of the midline of the torso like that. I just want to think of the various parts of the body here as simple shapes. Like the thigh here is tapered cylinder. 
the calf it's got another sort of tapered cylinder but with a bulge up here that's what the calf muscle is at looking at my picture pick up that little bit Here is kind of a curve where the uh, bend of this um, side that's half hidden sort of bends in towards the crotch. Look at that. And again, picture like a tapered cylinder, it's just the part of that tapered cylinder is hidden. right here sort of the hip bones and on this side the hip bone will be right about here so in the reference picture oh I just realized in the reference picture that arm is much higher up sort of more here and coming out like that much closer to the reference image. So yeah, here's sort of the other hip bone. So you picture right in here is the pelvis. It's just kind of sitting on the same like this. sketching out the sewing that much because I don't care so much about it. Can see sort of the rope. I don't for something like the rope right here, I do kind of want to use ruler. Just because I want that line relatively straight. her bottom it's right here Right now what I'd like to do is I put in a lot of kind of contour lines that sort of show me what the shape is without actually adding any shading because at this point I'm not doing a full shaded drawing. I just want to know where the forms are. Start sketching in her breasts right here. This model has fairly small Really small breasts that are mostly flattened by a sports bra. So I'm just gonna make them a little, a little fuller than in the reference because I'm just going to judge from picture how they might look without that rather flattening. Sports bra. And let's see. Um, I may have gotten, looks like I got the center line just off just a little bit. That's part of the way I do this, is really is just sort of building up. And erasing and 
tweaking and because this is just meant as sort of a practice thing to get the forms down. Not really trying to get a really clean rendered look at the end. It's not the point. If I really liked how this turned out and I want it to be a full image, what I would do would be get my uh, light box and sketch it onto clean paper. And from there, work on rendering it out better. And I can see as I'm sketching this where I positioned the head originally, which is why I do this, the sort of original bit really, really loosely. That's where I originally put the head was not quite right. Now right now for the head, I'm not going to render this out because this is a figure study. It's not, you know, a full portrait. It's not anything like that. I'm just trying to get the form so... Let's sort of do the I do want to sort of sketch in where if I was going to put the features where the center line of the face is where the eye line is. So you can see the little sort of outline of the Alright, now be a little circle for where the outline is. Bicep. We're seeing the arms as various simple shapes. And I have a little canine visitor in here. of a hand here. ball of the heel right here.
And despite the fact I showed you all those different pencils, it looks like I'm going to pretty much do this all with the Dixon Ticonderoga. We'll see. I'm going to put contour lines in after this, and I'll probably do that with a mechanical pencil. So there are cat. Let's go with my mechanical here and first my eraser and get rid of some of these lines that I'll need. All contour lines are is just kind of going around the shape of the form. This is and this is how I like to sort of plan out trying to figure out what the volumes of the shapes are. Because then when I go in, if I were to trace this out and uh, want to shade it, you know, to fully detail out and shade it. Having the contour lines on the initial sketch that I can refer to will give me an idea of sort of how I'd want the uh, shape of the shading to go. Honestly, before I figured out to do contour lines, that this is what works for me. It may not work for you. Um, this right here is sort of the shape of the rib cage, which is also helpful. So let's shape the abs. Um, I'd have a real hard time with uh, my pictures looking really flat. And part of this is that um, because I'm mostly a sculptor, the way my brain works is that I think more in three dimensions. So I try to shade without having sort of contour lines that let me figure out what the uh, three dimensional forms are. It's a lot harder problem or a lot harder time with it. Um, not everyone has that problem, obviously, but I do. Here, so set for where our fingers are, and the shape of the breast there. It's kind of the armpit area right there.
that's going a little too far. If you look at the way the chest is, the uh, armpit in front is further up than where it connects in the back. So I just want to make that clear, that sort of tapers back. Alright, that's just a quick little figure study, which looks like that took about Start to finish is looking like this about 25 minutes. Uh, the actual drawing is probably about 20 minutes because I've been I did the initial talk which is probably about 10 minutes, five minutes. Um, so yeah, that's how I do quick little figure studies. If I was doing this for myself, you know, just for myself, and I wasn't trying to make this into a video, that's a reasonable length to to watch. Um, I'd probably spend a lot more time on this, probably closer to an hour. Um, because I really want to figure out the anatomy and get it right. Even if I'm never going to do anything with it, because most of these figure sketches I don't do anything with. They're just practice. And, um, which is what you want to do. You want to do a lot of practicing of sketching. It doesn't matter if you don't ever really do anything with these sketches. It's not the point. The point is to get the practice in. Um, you need a certain amount of time put into just practice to get good at anything. And I wouldn't even necessarily say I'm that good at uh, drawing, because I'm mostly a sculptor. But it, you know. I found that as I do more just sitting down and really drilling into figure studies or drawing animals or landscapes, I'm terrible at landscapes, I'm trying to get better at them. So I've been doing more uh, practice sketches with landscapes and perspective. I even, you know, went and got me myself a book on perspective to try to practice it. Um, but yeah, so find yourself some reference images, whether it's uh, on stock image sites or DeviantArt, or you know, get a friend willing to pose for you. That's the best thing if you can't find a figure drawing group is have a really um, understanding friend who will stand and, and pose for you. But um, I hope you found this video uh, helpful. And thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Thank you. Goodbye.